We're going to call to order the January 2013 uh, meeting of the school board. Uh, welcome everybody on this cold uh, Tuesday in January. Um, we will go about our business and uh, as is uh, with our agenda, our first um, action is call the meeting to order and a roll call if uh, Member Mernicke would please take care of that for me. Hold on a Member second, Cameron. please. Member Cameron. <laughs> Member Johnston. Here. Member Kaspers here. I am here. Member Salika Panko. Here. Member Watson. Here. Member Westholm. Here. Superintendent Gronseth. Here. Deputy Kirk Bill Hansen. Here. Secretary Melinda Thebold. Here. And the student representatives are not here today. We have a quorum. Thank you, Member Mernicke. Please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to go on to reading and approving of minutes. Uh, could I get a, uh, a motion to approve the regular school board meeting minutes from December 18th, 2012, please? Uh, and a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Moving on to our special school board meeting of January 7th, 2013. Could I get a motion to accept? So moved. And a second by Member Wasson. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Signify by saying aye. Any opposed? All right, moving on to our um, annual organizational meeting of January 7th, 2013. Could I get a motion to accept or approve, excuse me? So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. I went too fast. Um, Moving on to our audience participation, Member Johnston, could you please uh, check for any speakers? Um, we have none, and uh, I'm going to give folks a minute if there is anybody who wanted to that has not signed up. Good. Okay, moving on from that. Uh, um, part of the agenda of moving on to reading of communications and petitions. Hit my mic. Um, uh, Superintendent Gronset. Thank you. There is one letter addressed to all school board members from Barb Welcome expressing concerns related to the district's decision to set the levy at 11.9% for next year. Okay, thank you, Superintendent Gronseth. Um, we are now going to move on to the report of the superintendent. Mr. Gronseth, please. Yes, and we're going to... <laughs> there we go. Uh, we're going to start off um, with something new. Uh, as you know, we're fortunate to have many talented and caring and dedicated youth and adults within our schools, and the Duluth School Board is setting aside time at each regular meeting to formally recognize the great things accomplished by our students and staff and present them with a certificate of recognition. Such accomplishments will continue to be recognized on the ISD 709 website, our parent portal, community and staff newsletters, Channel 22, ISD 709 marketing materials, and shared with local media, among other communication venues. And I would invite uh, the school board members to come down to the floor in front of uh, the desk as we recognize our students and staff.
Good evening. I'm pleased to start by introducing Nicole Esken from Duluth East High School. She's been awarded a blue jacket as part of the Minnesota FFA Foundation Bright Future Program. The program provides sponsored FFA jackets to Minnesota youth who are starting their FFA career. The foundation partners with individuals and businesses to provide resources that promote and enhance leadership, personal growth, and career success for Minnesota youth in agricultural education. Congratulations, Nicole. I'm now pleased to uh, introduce the Denfell Key Club members. Once you come. Okay. Key Club is a service program for high school students, providing opportunities to build character and develop leadership. Denfell students are recognized for their work on two projects that helped out our community. Project Linus. Members of the Denfell Key Club made 38 blankets and donated them to children in need in the Duluth area. Autumn Soli headed the project. Katie Rudd, Megan Rudd, Holly Brown, Gam Moore, Well Richardson. Sky, Skylar Servala, Matt Johnson, Megan O'Connor, Kellen Boyden, Brielle Larson, Jade Nelson, Hannah Heskin, Wyatt Butler, and Andrew Martin. Also, Operation Christmas Child, members of the Denfell Key Club again packed 33 shoe boxes with fun and useful gifts for Operation Christmas Child. And the, the, the individual uh, uh, who headed uh, up this project is uh, Jaden Helston, who's a junior, and then P Paige Schuler, Cheyenne Rudosevich, Katie Rudd, um, Maya Linden, uh, Gamaya. Becca Hendrickson, Sarah Hendrickson, Dylan Glader, Kellen Boynton, and Lucille, Lucy Bellings, and Jenka Trunowski with the, uh, it's what? Oh, Ginka, okay. And you've already received your, um, your okay. And I apologize to those I've butchered your name. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I'm glad you knew that. One last um, presentation is to Aaron Siegel, Homecroft Elementary, um, who is the winner in the Essentia Health Light of Love ASA contest sponsored by St. Mary's Medical Center. He received a plaque and participated in the Tree of Lights lighting ceremony at St. Mary's Medical Center. Aaron wasn't able to make it, but the certificate will be presented to him at, uh, at a uh, Homecraft School Award ceremony. So congratulations to Aaron as well. It is now.
Thank you. Members of the board, thank you for this opportunity to speak to you and the community tonight. I come to you filled with quiet but certain optimism. It's practical, it's realistic, and yes, there are hills to climb, but I believe that we have the legs to do it. We're working together with the city, businesses, educational leaders throughout Duluth and their willingness to learn more about the challenges facing public education and their generosity in sharing advice and support has had a positive impact. Through the Think Kids initiative, we're reaching out to the community, asking for their thoughts about what's going well and what we could be doing better. I'm encouraged to hear from people who are pleased with the education and support their children receive through our schools, with the quality of our teaching staff and with our facilities. And I hear loud and clear that addressing class size and making our schools safe and healthy places to learn should continue to be a priority. I encourage everyone, parents, community members, grandparents, business leaders, teachers, neighbors, and more to participate in this community-wide discussion about the future of our schools. No one is excluded. Anyone who wishes to can share their ideas and in doing so, help shape the future of the Duluth schools. More information about the meetings is available on our website. We continue to focus on providing the best education possible for our students and by working within the resources we have to do so. Students find success in different ways. Meeting a wide range of needs, interests, learn and learning styles is a key to providing the best opportunity for student achievement. Some students excel in a purely academic setting, and others are inspired by hands-on coursework or a combination of both. Our K-12 schools continue to provide opportunities for many learning styles, along with an experienced staff, modern classrooms, and a wide variety of course offerings. College and the schools, advanced placement, career tech ed, languages, award-winning music programs, and rigorous core curriculum to prepare students for a bright future. Our students regularly outperform state and national averages on ACT and college entrance exams. And each year, our graduating seniors earn millions of dollars in scholarships. This fall, three of our graduates were accepted to Harvard University. One of our culinary students has been accepted at the Culinary Arts Institute of America. I'm proud of how our teachers and administrators and community members are working together to address the achievement gap at Laura MacArthur Elementary. As a priority school, Laura MacArthur received a $1.3 million grant to implement their plan. Our partnership with the United Way Delegation on Education is providing before and after school support toward addressing the achievement gap. The delegation was recognized in Washington, D.C. Washington, for their efforts, and this is just one of many community partnerships we've established to support our students and our schools. Sharing information is important as well. We have greatly increase the transparency by providing detailed budgets and audited financial statements on our website for public review, along with test data, links to the Department of Education, and other resources. Information provided to the school board is also available online for public review, and so are recordings of school board meetings. Financial experts from the community have been invited to assist with ongoing analysis of our finances and provide advice. It's a way to bring an objective, third-party view to the issues surrounding school finance, which at times can be very complex and emotional issues, as you know. This is not a decision-making body, but rather citizens with expertise in the areas of finance accounting and budgeting, people with the ability to professionally analyze finances and provide reasoned advice based on that analysis. We've produced an annual report that with the help of advertisers has gone out to more than 30,000 homes in the community and started an electric, electronic newsletter that goes out to 12,000 people regularly. Schools across the state and across the nation are faced with challenging budgetary issues. 
declining enrollments, nearly flat state funding formulas, and low levels of monetary support at the local level have meant nearly 20 years of cutbacks for public schools in Duluth. While we'll always strive to offer our students the best education possible with the resources we're given, it's a fact that without substantial changes to state funding or an increase in local levels of funding, Duluth will continue to face tough budgets, cuts into the foreseeable future. As we plan for the next school year, my staff and I are going through our expenses with a fine tooth comb, looking for reductions that will have the least impact on our classrooms. We'll continue to work with others to encourage more long-term solutions. And I was encouraged today by the governor's, Governor Dayton's budget proposal. His proposal calls for significant changes in the funding of schools in Minnesota. I am hopeful that he will receive a great deal of support as the legislative session continues, and we will monitor, the, monitor that closely. This year, we finished construction on the two middle school projects. Lincoln Park and Ordine East successfully opened in September, providing state-of-the-art buildings and educational spaces for our students. A year ago at this time, the ability to move forward with the last two construction projects was uncertain. Today, both Congdon Park and Myers-Wilkins projects are underway and scheduled to open in September. I'm glad children in the center of town will have access to modern classrooms, media centers, and safety features. We'll continue to work to make sure that these projects are completed and done so within budget. It's been seven years since the Duluth School District embarked on a comprehensive project to reduce the number of schools in operation and then update those that remained. Funding sources included operational savings, from running fewer schools, energy rebates, a tax increase, and revenues from the sale of unused properties. Today, most of that has been accomplished. Savings are being realized. Energy rebates are coming in. The district is running fewer schools, and those that remained have been modernized. One piece of the financing structure has been challenged, a downturn in the economy, combined with changes in the real estate market, are delaying the sale of unused properties. The good news is we've sold six properties and are in the process of closing on two more. The rest are being aggressively marketed locally and nationally. We need to get the best price we can, but we must also take into consideration how the properties can best serve the community. When I speak with people who are opposed to the school construction projects, they talk about how things might have been done differently. I understand that. There are times that I too wish we had the ability to go back and do things in a way that more people could have accepted. From a practical standpoint, however, the schools are nearly done. There's no going back. And all but two of the schools are open and serving our children. They're beautiful buildings and they're going to be an asset to our community for years and years to come. Whether people are for or against the construction projects, most I talk with agree that our energy and our resources must now be directed toward the future, not the past. Duluth has had a change in superintendents, a change in board members since the school construction projects were approved, and we're reaching out to the community, forming partnerships, operating transparently, our time and resources must be invested in creating schools that welcome and inspire and educate our children now and well into the future. So again, I'm optimistic, and I thank you, the board, for your leadership. Many thanks to Mayor Ness, our Chamber of Commerce leadership, the United Way of Greater Duluth, the Y and YWCA, our teachers, our principals, parent leaders, and all those who care deeply about our schools and our students. Thanks to my staff and to the Duluth community at large. Thank you for providing me this opportunity to present to you today. Um, thank you, Superintendent. A wonderful presentation, and, and I appreciate your optimism and, and um, interest in moving us forward.
forward and moving us um, into our next phase of, of educating our students and our community. So thank you for your efforts. And um, if there's any other board members that have a comment pertaining to that, I certainly would welcome that. If or anybody questions. or questions that they would like to ask the superintendent regarding his uh, state of the district speech. Hold on a second. Uh, Member Wasson. Uh, Superintendent, thank you for your, um, as Tom said, optimism and continued support and faith. And um, I, for one, am looking forward to what these meetings that you have brought to this community um, to see what they say. Um, and your leadership will help us get to those next steps. So thank you very much. Any other board members? Um, Member Cameron, or wait, Member Johnson, I'm sorry. There we go. I have a couple of comments, but I think I'll hold it till the uh, education meeting on the I think for kids section there. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, moving on to our edu committee, education committee report. <laughs> kind of messed that up. <clears throat> and Member Cameron is our board um, committee chair for the education committee. However, she's a little under the weather, so we're going to have Member Johnston do the report for us this evening. So, Member Johnston, please. Sure, thank you. Uh, the Education Committee report, first of all, we have the Think Kids, Our Schools, Our Community, Our Future. Uh, the superintendent just talked about a little bit, but that was on. We had another presentation on the committee meeting. Uh, next on the item was uh, grants, a uh, service learning grant for Homecroft Elementary. Uh, uh, the next one is a Harbor Town Rotary Community Grant for $1,500. Minnesota Power Foundation Youth and Philanthropy Grant for $1,000. And then we move into our action items. Uh, those We've got uh, three resolutions. And I'll just read those. Uh, resolution number E01-131371 is Lester Park School Force uh, designation. Would you like to read the resolution as well, Member Johnson, if you would uh, go to well, it in sure your I board book? That. <clears throat> yeah, we can each do each. Uh, actually, we just have one resolution, so you can just do that. Well, here it is. Okay. Me, resolution. Is? Support for Lester Park Elementary School Force designation. Whereas the school board of Independent School District 709 recognized that a school force would have a positive impact on students, teachers, parents, and the community, where students would learn a variety of subjects and have a place that enhances an appreciation of natural resources and heightens community pride and involvement. And whereas Lester Park Elementary School student, parents, staff, and community members wish to begin the process of establishing the Lester Park School Forest, now therefore be it resolved that the School Board of Independent School District 709 supports the establishment of the Lester Park School Forest and outdoor classroom comprising lots 376 to 379, including part of vacated 53rd Avenue East, Jason to lot 379, Block 33, Crosley Edition, addition of to Duluth, and supports enrollment of said school forest and Minnesota DNR School Forest Program for educational purposes. Could you move the uh, the resolution then at the bottom of the page, Member Johnston? Sure, I'll move that uh, resolution, which is uh, number E01131373. Could I get a second? 71. Oh, sorry. Okay, could I get a second for that? Second. Member Westholm, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, moving back to the agenda, Member Johnston. Sure. Calendar year for 2013-14, and uh, do we have a motion on that? I don't think we have a motion, but we do have a calendar that was uh, that was distributed to us that we looked at and we talked about. 
And I guess I'd make a motion to accept that calendar. Um, actually, it isn't a resolution, so we don't. We'll we'll approve it as part of our general okay, sure. um, committee report. So. Grant yep. So moving on to the resolution for grant applications, Member Johnston. Okay, sure. Um, before we do that, another action item is, as it's going down the list here, is the recommended school, middle school course offerings for next year. We talked about that, and that was a handout to us at the committee meeting. Then we're moving on to the acceptance of grants, a resolution, and that's on page 21. I'll read portions of that. Uh, it's the acceptance of grant awards to the public schools, whereas Minnesota statute 465.03 requires the school district to accept grants by resolution expressed in the terms prescribed by the donor in full. And whereas acceptance of the grant in accordance with the donor's terms is in the best interest of the Duluth Public Schools. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Duluth Public Schools does accept the below described grants from said organizations in accordance with terms set forth herein. Be it further resolved that the Duluth Public School wishes to extend this, to extend this grateful appreciation to these various organizations. I'll describe these very briefly. One is from the Northland Foundation. A grant for thirty thousand dollars. Terms uh, is funds for this will award. Uh, this grant award will be used to help support uh, having AmeriCorps in the Duluth Public Schools. The next grant is from the Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Minnesota, for amount of seventy-five thousand dollars. These funds will be used to partner with the Myers Wilkins Community School Collaborative, United Way of Greater Duluth, and Duluth Local Initiatives. Support corporation to expand services that address the social determinants of health impacting Myers Woods, Myers Wilkins families and other Duluth Hillside residents. I will move resolution E01131070. Uh, can I get a second? Second. Member Westholm, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, uh, Melinda, I just have one quick correction on the previous resolution 3071 for the Lester Park school designation. In our the beginning of our our minutes, it's uh, 3071, and on the resolution, it's 3073. 3073. Okay, thank you. Okay, back to you, Member Johnston. Sure. The next item was extended trip requests. Uh, we had two requests as one fifth graders from Nettleton to travel to Deep Portage Learning Center in Hackensack, Minnesota on January 7th to uh, January 9th to the 11th. Other one is band orchestra students from Denville will be traveling to Washington, D.C. Uh, from April 5 to 7. Uh, next item is joint curriculum review process agreement. Uh, that was between uh, uh, the Wisconsin Indian Technical College and the public schools. And last and uh, most very important is diplomas for the following students, Courtney Ray St. Marie, Dylan Phillip Breyer, Jeffrey Hicks, Grant Paul Everett, Xavier, Jerome Josiah, Pelton, Pelton Nikoit, uh, Gabriel Chips, Rhea Chantel Dawson, Alyssa Ray Morin. It was recommended that the school board accept the above diplomas. Uh, sure, I can move the entire report. Okay, could I get a second for that? A second to remove, or a second by Member Wasson. Um, any uh, things members would like to hold out for discussion? Member Johnston? Uh, number 1A1. 1A1. Any others for folks? All right, we're there, Member Johnston. Go ahead, please. Uh, sure. I just wanted to make a few comments on the Think Schools. First of all, I've been attending quite a few of them. They're very, very uh, good programs. I think people has been really interesting for me to talk to people and hear the comments, a uh, wide variety of comments. Pretty much everything. 
Uh, one thing I would, uh, having said that though, one thing I think that we are kind of missing, and maybe Superintendent, you missed a little bit in your presentation, because we did disagree on some of these things. But I think that, uh, I think it's important that in addition to talking about things like the thing Kids Initiative, which is excellent, I think we have to expand that to talking about, uh, for example, the financial planning that we've done. As the board knows, I've expressed my concerns about how a lot of the funding, or too much of the funding for the red plan is coming out of the classrooms. I think it's really critical that we have those discussions. Somewhat, uh, somewhat uh, they may be painful discussions, but I think it's important that we have those discussions. And some of that goes back to the original uh, way the red plan was financed. I think if we could have those discussions with the community, I think that we could move forward and the, the big elephant that is still in the room. So with that, uh, I'd say, you know, certainly, I certainly want to, again, recommend the Think, moving, or the think Kids is uh, really great, but I think we do have to do more. You alluded to some of the financial planning that we've done, some committees there, but I think we have to have those discussions with the public as well. Uh, some of the items that I've brought up, I think, would would help. So, with those comments, uh, that's that's my comments. I thank you again, the uh, superintendent, for your comments. Superintendent, um, you know, certainly financial planning or our financial status as a district has been a big part of the Think Kids conversations that are going on all across the city, and in no way are the conversations in those meetings limited. Uh, people are free to bring up whatever topics uh, they choose to bring up at those meetings. As you know, you've been at uh, a few of them, so have other board members, and I appreciate that. I um, appreciate ev everyone getting out and, and listening. Uh, you mentioned that funding being taken out of the classroom, and just a reminder that uh, the funds that are used for the long range facilities plan are funds that are from the savings of operating less schools, which I, I mentioned in my speech as well. Um, and again, I, I invite everyone to come to meetings and to share whatever's on their mind. Let us know what we're doing well. Let us know what you want done differently in the future. But really the focus is on the future. Um, where do we want the Duluth schools to be? Where do we want to go as a community? And uh, again, uh, visit our website. There's a list of many, many uh, meetings for people to go to. Uh, you can also fill in an online survey if you can't make it to a meeting, or write us a letter at Think Kids at the district address, or give us a call. Um, we're very willing to hear what everyone has to say about our future. Thank you, Superintendent Gronseth. Um, Member Watson. So not, there we go. Um, I, I guess I would have to disagree with what Member Johnson said. That's one person's opinion, and I'm glad that you said something about the budget and the long-range plan. Um, I, another thing that I think is important that we have done in the past, and I'm sure you're anticipating doing it again, is we are just on that edge of budget discussions. Um, we have a lot of meetings coming up for this community to partake in, and we're, we're encouraging that. Um, in the past, those meetings have brought out many, many different things, and that is another opportunity for everyone to participate um, in finances for our district. Um, so I appreciate what you had to say, Superintendent, and um, clearing up those, those things that were said. Thank you. Okay, Judy. Excuse me, um, the member, actually Art was first, Member Johnson. Sure, I find it surprising that somebody says somebody's clearing up things that said. Yeah, I'd like to have some clarity for sure and that hasn't happened. Again, yes, we're looking for the future here. I'm kind of tired about hearing about the red plan too, but we can never be tired of hearing about how we're financing and, and the, what I think the fatally flawed financing that led to the red plan and that we're still in the midst of that is impacting us and the savings are not paying for the month that's being pulled out, uh, which last we remind people amounted to uh, $7.6 million. That's not 
sustainable, we have to address that issue, along with lots of other things like change orders, cost overrides, etc. Member Saliga Ponko. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank uh, Member Wasson for some of her comments and the superintendent because no matter how many dozens of times over and over, we know that we are not taking money out of the classroom to put towards the red plan. It is actually saved quite a bit. Um, but no matter how many times we reiterate that, um, it's never enough. listened to. It's never enough. Thank you. Um, so just financially looking at it, we know how it was set up over the last seven years. And it's worked exactly like it was supposed to, except like the superintendent mentioned about property sales. Mm -hmm. So I don't want the public thinking that that's, you know, that is one member's um, opinion. The rest of us know we do our homework and we know how the finances work. So I just want to remind that we have heard this dozens of times. So I would like to move on and um, vote on the Education Committee report. So. Can I just call the question? Um, why don't we get to that in a second? I'm going to give Member Johnston a moment here to respond and then let's move forward, please. Sure, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, it did go exactly according to plan. That is correct. The plan was that half the, nearly half of the red plan is going to be funded through the classrooms. And no matter, uh, if people are entitled to their own opinion, but they're not entitled to their own facts. $7.6 million was pulled out last year, which is way more than anybody even, even, even their alleged and claimed savings. So I wish the board would get their facts straight, and that's what I mean. If the board keeps in denial that, oh yes, this has been great for the classrooms, we're going to continue with having deficits, and we're going to continue having lack of support from our community, because it does take it. And again, I would, I've challenged people to have discussions on this uh, numerous times. Nobody can respond to what I say other than saying that I'm wrong. Well, let's have some, let's have some facts for a change. The facts are that the, even at best, the red plan never put any of the savings, even that we had, were ever going to go back in the classroom. That's a fatal flaw. If we were going to save money, that money should have went to the classrooms, period should not have been put on the backs of our students, which is what it is doing now. I'm asking the board to get out of their denial. All right, we're going to uh, give uh, Member Slegapunko a chance to respond, and then board members, let's move on. I do want to uh, make a request, though, to uh, the superintendent to set up a meeting next week for he myself, Member Johnson, and Mr. Hansen, and, and appropriate to discuss this, if we could, please, and and, um, uh, and I'm going to uh, make that request, if we could do that, to discuss that. Um, okay, moving back to Member Saligapunko, please. I'm sorry. Um, hold on a second, please. <laughs> How does this? There we go. Okay, just All big right. fingers. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Um, I just want to say um, the problems with our funding is really comes down to the state and federal funding. And that's, we've known that um, talking to every other school district at MSBA, everyone is going through the same thing with lack of funding. I would like to move on and vote on the education committee. Sounds great. Um, seeing no further lights, could uh, we have had a a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of approving the Education Committee report as stated, please do so by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries 7-0. Moving on to the HR report, Member Westholm. Hold on a second, please. All right, the uh, HR Re Human Resources Report is, uh, is usually the case is relatively short, but I will run through the uh, staffing report action items that you'll find in your books. And uh, at the top, there's one certified appointment, uh, two certified co-curricular appointments, one certified deceased, uh, two certified leaves, three certified long-term subs, 
one certified retirement, one certified temporary decrease, two certified temporary increases, 11 non-certified appointments, three non-certified leaves, two non-certified permanent increases, two non-certified promotions, one non-certified reclassification, three non-certified resignations, one non-certified re non-certified retirement, and one non-certified temporary increase. And I move the uh, Human Resources Report for January. Second. Uh, second. Any discussion regarding the Human Resources Report? Seeing none, uh, can we move to a vote, please? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries 7-0. Moving on to the Business Committee Report. Member Siligapunko, please. Hold on a second, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's see. Um, we start out, this is the Business Committee report for Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013. Um, number one is the financial report and all the usual reports that we have there. Number two, bids, RFPs, and quotes. We do have quotes, um, Voyager Bus Company, Special Student Transportation, and we did see that before. So recommendation that the school board approve the contract with Voyager Bus Company not to exceed $50,000. Number three, policies and regulations. We have um, policy, school board member compensation, and we're looking at not changing. So this will be the sixth year in a row that we've had zero increase. I just want to point that out because it's ever been, been ever since I've been on the board. So we have been zero. Um, we also have, let's see, number four, contracts, change orders, and leases. We have change orders for the Eastern Middle School, for Myers-Wilkins and Congdon, and resolutions, and I'll go right into that. Board members, you'll find on page 47, the, um, the first one, which is for change in authorized um, student activity bank account. I move resolution B1-13-3071, dated January 22nd, 2013. Do I have a second for that? Member Wasson seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Moving on to the second re resolution. Okay, and I have the resolution in the legislative platform, which you have a copy in your um, folders, board members. Resolved by School Board of Independent School District Number 709, St. Louis County, Minnesota, that they attach 2011. 2011, no, 2013. Duluth School District Legislative Platform be adopted. Resolution, I move resolution B1-13-3072, dated January 22nd, 2013. Could I get a second? Second. Um, Member Westholm, any discussion? Um, Member Johnston. Uh, yes, I've got a just thing to point out here. I support this resolution, but back on under the fourth paragraph, permanent structural change, last sentence reads, tax reform should include replacing school district reliance on local property tax increases with other state taxes. And just pointing that out is that uh, that is something that this board has frequently said that they want to increase local taxes. Uh, and, uh, and again, I'm just pointing out here that our formal resolution here is saying that we are trying to move away from reliance on local property tax. I'm just pointing that out. Ooh, it's under the fourth paragraph, you add. Um, it doesn't say local on the fourth paragraph. Could you clarify what your intent is with that? Well, sure. What I was saying was uh, I read this, and this, this is saying that we're supposed to be relying on property tax. Property tax is local, if you don't, didn't know that. I just quoted this. I'll read it again. Tax reform should include re replacing school district reliance on property tax increases with other state taxes. Okay. All right, thank you. M Member Mernicke. I think everybody on this board supports the permanent structural change. We would like to see reliance on property tax replaced. Right, right. We'd, we'd love to see that. Yeah. Member Johnston. in the past that they think we should increase 
reliance on property taxes. And again, I'm glad to see that this is not the our official position is not to say that. I'm just commenting, uh, comment, comment, or commending our lobbyists for putting that language in. So th thank Mr. Solberg for that. All right, uh, we're going to vote now on resolution B-1-13-3072. All those in favor? Aye. Designate aye. aye. Any opposed? That passes 7-0. Back to the uh, report, Member Slagopanko. Thank you. Um, let's see, where were we? Um, I think I'm at number six, right? Informational on these items are for private provided for informational purposes only and no action is required. So it's all the usual um, reports and we have future items, a review of Memorial Parks Master Plan. So I move the remainder of the business committee report without the resolutions. Can I get a second? Second. Seconded by Member Wasson. Um, anything folks would like to uh, move for discussion? Member Johnston. Uh, 3A1. 4B, 6A, and 6C, I'd like to have a special vote for that, and 6F. Okay, um, any further from any other board members? All right, Member Johnston, you're up with 3A1. Sure, this is a, a policy 80-30, and I'm just making a suggestion here. Actually, I'm gonna make, a, I'm gonna move a amendment to this, that we decrease our compensation by 10%, or minus $63 away from that, for a total thing of, Five hundred and sixty seven dollars instead of six hundred and thirty. Could you repeat that motion? So, uh, sure, I'd like to amend uh, this uh, to ch change the stipend from six hundred and thirty down to five hundred and sixty seven or ten percent reduction. Is there a second for that motion? Is there a second for that motion? Um, we do not have a second for that, Member Johnston. Um, you are still discussing that, or are you ready? Um, okay, Member Cameron. There we go. Hold on. I was going to second it for the purpose of discussion. Uh, as Member Saligo Punkel pointed out, um, it's been six years and, and maybe possibly seven since the board increased um, the stipend. So. Should I second it? There's no second. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, 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 okay. No, 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 no. All right. Okay. Uh, moving on to change orders uh, 4B, one member Johnston. Uh, sure. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Again, I'm going to look at these, these change orders. Uh, first, the first one which is A, uh, deleting steel frame platforms. That should have been part of the plans. This was completed a long time ago. $1,433 isn't even worth the paperwork to do that on. Uh, down on the look at item uh, number three, which is Continental Elementary School, which is asbestos removal. It's reminding the board that uh, our review and comment uh, motion that we passed last April included $335,345 for asbestos removal and obviously and that had increased incidentally from about 15000 on the original red plan cost. Clearly there had been a lot of analysis done on this and again you know having a increase on that this is not a question about asbestos it's a question of the accountability Again, uh, we've already spent $335,000. That was what the original bid was, and adding another eight, $8,500 is just, again, on called for. 
and I'd like to move to to delete these change items. So are you making a motion to remove those items? Yes, Wait a second, please. Wait. I give you okay. So you're yes. making a motion to remove these three change orders from the agenda? Correct. Okay, do I have a second for that? Is there a second for that? That motion fails. Member Johnson, on to uh, 6A, please. Well, uh, 6A is expenditure contracts. And normally, most of these I support. I'm going to, I'd like to eventually be able to uh, support some of these and not support others. Last time I brought these up, I wasn't able to pull items out. One item that I'm concerned about is the lobbyist apartment rental, $8,850, uh, $4, which is for six months. That's $890, $890 a month. Uh, and this, that's only for half a year. It seems like um, that we could be more, we could have less expenses for our lobbyist if we just paid him to drive back and forth, I think. It seems excessive. Anyway, I'm just bringing that up as a comment. Okay, thank you, Member Johnson. On to 6C, please. Let's get you lit up here in just a second. All right. Okay, well, I'd like to have a separate vote on 6C. Just informational items, so there's no vote on that, Member Johnston. Oh, well, then I'll vote against the whole committee report then as usual then if we can pull out certain items. Uh, okay, then uh, 6F. 6F, please. Sure, 6F is more change orders. Um, hold on, Member Johnson. Member uh, Superintendent Grantseth would like to like to respond, please. I just wanted to, um, the, with the lobbyist apartment rental, if we were to pay him mileage to drive back and forth, uh, based on legislative session being four days a week, um, it would be two thousand four hundred dollars a month. Um, so times six would be $14,400 to pay his mileage. Thank you, uh, Superintendent. Uh, Member Johnson, on to 6F, please. Sure, 6F is uh, change orders, more change orders, of course. Uh, went through and looked at some of these things. I'll just pull out a few things. Increase for ceiling modifications, increase to relocate outlets, Security systems, double changing switches to double pull, double throw, card readers, uh, wireless exits, uh, duct detectors. Uh, just pulling out a few of the obvious ones. Relocate vent, attic demolition, ceiling demolition, temporary door, door threshold, the infill. All these items obviously should have been part of the contract. They should not be change orders. And pulling out a few other things here, we've got some really silly things. We've got a $600 deduct. We've got a $625 add, $288 add. I mean, these are, this is just silly, just plain silly. I mean, a change order, you can't even do the bookkeeping for $288. And this indicates to me that this is, change orders are out of control. I'm asking the board to start saying no to change orders. Tell our construction managers that no, we will not have any change orders anymore, period. And just to remind people, this is $145,000. There is a connection, there is a connection between the, uh, our construction and the classrooms. 
reminded that's about three teachers right there this just for one month and I'm asking for the board here and this is one one of many reasons I'm going to be voting against this report is that uh, the change orders are out of control and I'll again I'll be continuing to say this forever until we get this under control they are out of control hold on a second please Superintendent Grantseth. Um, we have been bringing you the change orders and handling the change orders as the board has instructed. Um, Mr. Leiter, do you have anything to add other than um, I don't believe that there's anything that's uh, out of the ordinary in how we're handling these as opposed to the rest of the plan? Uh, superintendent, members of the board, um, I guess what I feel is important for the board to understand and recognize is that we we did hire design professionals and I think this is where member Johnston is going um, we hired them to provide us with designs and specifications but we also um, took on some pretty significant projects with which involved remodeling existing spaces uh, there was reference to asbestos um, just an example you can do all the investigation you want and when you start doing interior demolition major demolition there are areas that have asbestos insulation on pipes that you don't see until you actually get into the walls or tear apart floors that is an example of where we have to address those um, issues with change orders we have already identified in our contracts what we believe and understand and know is going to be required and when we discover unforeseen or things that because of how it all fits together within a remodeled building um, wasn't able to be identified in advance by our design professionals we have done, made those changes through the change order process which is a typical process within the construction industry and I think I've made comments before on where we are from a percentage of the total construction with change orders and that um, I don't believe the level of change orders percentage of the total construction is out of line with what is out there in industry member Saliga Punko thank you I really appreciate that Carrie and just I want to point out um, I'm sure when the city built the new police station that they just opened this last year, I'm sure they had some change orders. Also when the new Amsoil Arena, in fact, I remember when they were digging for that arena, I think they found a bomb or something. I mean, I think they had to, they had extra costs for that. So what I'm saying is I appreciate that we get to see the change orders. I mean, we could decide as a board that we didn't want to see them and then they just deal with them and then, you know, we just see the final cost. But this gives us a little bit more oversight with what is happening. So I appreciate that. This is a lot better accounting than if you just did it within budget and we don't see anything except you just get it done. So I appreciate that. And I am ready to move on okay. for the rest of the business report. And if <clears throat> anything else, I will call the question. Okay, so you're moving the remainder of the business report. Um, could I get a second for that, please? Uh, second by Member Wasson. Your light is on, Mr. Mernicke. Do you have something to add? All right, uh, seeing no further discussion regarding the business report, uh, could I get a motion to accept? Or excuse me, a vote to accept? I'm sorry. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? No. Carry six to one. Um, we are now on to, let me find that please, if you bear with me a second. I'll find my agenda here. Um, we are now on to, uh, Special, special resolutions, there are none uh, questions other. Um, I'm going to request that the board members that attended the MSBA, um, if uh, they would please give us a, a very brief 30 seconds to a minute sort of report on, on what they saw at the MSBA uh, co conference. If they would please, I believe Member Saligapunko and Member Johnston both attended. So we'll start with you, Member Saligapunko. Excuse me, um, Mern, your light is on there. Is there? I don't know. How to, I'm not okay, it. there we go. Okay. Melinda, I don't touch it. <laughs> 
Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll just say really quick, I was very impressed with our opening and closing speaker um, talking about um, the eight pillars of trust. It was excellent. The stories, the things, how you earn trust, and um, they all began with C, words like clarity, commitment, consistency. There was, you know, all eight words were with a C, and it was very impressive, and he had great stories. Um, he's from Minnesota a great speaker. Um, and one other real quick thing, um, workshop that I went to that was about concession food being healthy. And I thought that was something I have to bring to our high schools because they actually made as much money. They worked in collaboration with some of the community grocery stores and um, people that provide food. So that was quite interesting to me as we, as our athletic departments and activities are always trying to earn money and you could do it using more healthy food. So that's my little report. There was more I went to too, but that's enough. Thank you, Salig Member Sligapunko. Um, Member Johnston, would you like to uh, add to what you, uh, your seek and discovery? Sure, a couple, a couple, uh, as usual, I think is good and a good place to network with people. And I think the school knows this, but Casey Donald is passed on to the superintendent. The MSBA gives uh, two student uh, board member student board member scholarships for I think three thousand a year. And mind you, um, uh, Kai Fay got it here what, a few years ago. He was one of our members. And I'm sure he got this bill, but just pass that on and make sure that somebody. If, we, we, if other people apply, maybe we can get it again. We got some good student members. A couple real quick. Uh, things again we had the, the Tom Melcher talks as usual and again as apparently the governor came out with and I haven't read his his um, his budget but uh, there was talk about trying to redo the funding process for schools which I think everybody wants we don't have to go and beg local populations for money and basically you're trying to round off some of the um, reducing the emphasis on excess levies. One of a couple of real things, one was the round tables. It was a really, I thought, a good meeting by uh, Greg Abbott, which some of you probably know. And this was a meeting was called What Board Members Really Need to Know About Parliamentary Procedure. Uh, the board now is working with the Minnesota Association of Parliamentarians to do that, which I've been a member of for many years. And a couple of things that Greg had really emphasized was, one, is that the chair should act as a board servant. Emphasized that over and over again. Uh, other things he emphasized that the majority gives minority full opportunity to speak views. Another thing that, uh, that, that Greg suggested and emphasized quite a lot was that, yeah, you can call a question to get people to um, be quiet, but that's not recommended, and it also is limiting debate. It's going to just add dissension when you do that, and that seems to happen quite a lot for our board. So that was a good thing, a uh, good meeting, and again, the board is working with the Minnesota Association of Parliamentarians. Uh, a couple other real good things was, one, proven strategies, effective board, student superintendent relationships, uh, things. One of the statements on there was, if you have budget issues and questions, you will have pain. You can't put off addressing the problem. Some of the things I noticed, and that is other than, other than uh, learning to get along with people. And Bill and I talked about that afterwards. Uh, a couple real quick things. There was a, a good presentation by some lawyers about continuing contract rights. Won't go into that, but uh, again, lots of questions about contracts. Also, when I was down in St. Paul, I went and over to, to the state capitol and attended the Education Policy Committee and uh, sat, uh, happened to sit with Ron Solberg for about half an hour listening to a lot of the committee goings on. They've talked a lot about um, achievement gap, so that's ongoing, of course, in the legislature as well as everywhere. So that's uh, a summary. Uh, I do have one other thing. Could I do you have another? Does anybody else want to speak? Is this one other kind of announcement to make? Go Could ahead. I go ahead too? Sure. 
just wanted to thank the, um, the students from, from ISD 709 and of course the staff on, the, on last, uh, this weekend's Martin Luther King celebration. We had Denfeld's speakers, a speech class, uh, read much of his speech uh, at the Unitarian Church on, I think it was on Saturday or Friday. And there were lots of other activities by the students and ones that I'm not aware of. So I just want to put a thank you to the students that that aren't here anymore, but it was uh, very well done and appreciated much of their participation, and I'm sure from the administration and staff as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Member Johnson. I want to extend a thank you to both uh, Member Sligapunko and Member Johnson for attending the MSBA, um, representing ISD 709 at a state level. Um, and, and superintendent as well. I assumed you were there, <laughs> um, but I, I had intended on attending myself and had to take care of some things um, locally. So I thank you those that were able to attend and, and represent the district. And, and uh, um, also thanks again to our students. They've left now, but uh, certainly um, would like to see us infuse more of that, uh, what we saw earlier today at the beginning of the board meeting with our, our students and staff being recognized for the great efforts that they're doing, um, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom to positively impact our community um, with the many things that they do. So, um, Member Johnson, do you still have something to add or are you all done there, please? All right, with nothing else, um, folks, we are adjourned. Thank you.